Hello student and welcome back for machine design uh, machine design to uh, lecture series. So we have started a new model that is a design of clutches. Uh, first in first uh, lecture uh, in previous lecture we have discussed about the uh, requirements related to good clutch materials classification basic uh, what is a friction clutch what is a positive torque clutch so we have discussed that in a previous lecture in this lecture we will actually uh, see the working of the single plate clutch multi plate clutch and cone clutch and their designs okay so basically you can uh, refer this figure which is shown in your uh, screen so in it is show, showing that it is the simple schematic arrangement of a single disc or plate type of clutch. Okay, because it consists of a clutch plate, those having both side uh, having a frictional material, which we can apply. I will show you. Okay, so. The, this is a frictional material. I'm just enlarging there, darkening there. These are two the friction material which is uh, applied over the disc so that it can be easily create a frictional force uh, and it can be withstand with uh, these two members. This one is a fixed member and this is a movable member. So it is, if you uh, refer the diagram, it, it is mounted on a hub which is freely move uh, in axial in axial direction in this axial direction along the spline of the driving shaft the pressure plate is mounted inside the clutch body which is bolted on the flywheel okay here it is bolted with the flywheel and the both the pressure plates and the flywheel rotate with the engine crankshaft or the driving shaft. The pressure plates pushes the clutch uh, clutch plate towards the flywheel by set of spring. Here the springs are there. They can apply pressure from this direction. Okay, so that this will directly engage with this friction plate. Then it apply force on this uh, uh, metal plate. And again, it is applied the pressure on that friction plate, and this friction plate is directly engaged with the um, flywheel. Okay, so nothing is that. Uh, so thing is that when we apply the pressure on uh, on this area surface, so automatically the pressure should be enough that it can be hold. Uh, the the friction between uh, these flywheel and the driven surface. The three layers are carried on pivoted suspended from in the case of the body. These are arranged in a such a manner so that the pressure applied uh, pressure plate moves away from the flywheel by inward movement of the thrust bearing. The bearing is mounted upon the forked shaft and moves forward when the clutch pedal is pressed. Okay, here the POT system is uh, shown. When you apply force on here, it rotates, it can move for, forward, okay, and it can uh, apply pressure or release pressure. So it totally depends if you are engaging or disengaging. Now, when the uh, clutch pedal is pressed down, its link force forces the thrust release bearing to move in, a in towards the flywheel and pressuring along the ends of the levers inward. The levers are phase, uh, forced to turn on their suspended pivot and the pressure plate moves away from the flywheel by the knife edge, thereby compressing the clutches, clutch springs. This action removes the pressure from the clutch plate and thus the moves back from the flywheel and the driving shaft becomes stationary. On the other hand, 
the foot is taken off from the clutch pad paddle the thrust bearing moves back towards the lip by lever this allows the springs to extend and apply the pressure on the plate which pushes <coughs> the clutch plate back towards the flywheel the axle pressure extended by the spring provided a frictional force in the circumferential direction when the relative motion between the driver and driven member tends to take place if the torque due to the friction force exceeds the torque to be transmitted then no slipping takes place and the power is transmitted from the driving shaft to the driven shaft now we need to discuss about the design aspect now considering the two frictional surfaces mounted in between the single disc or you can say plate okay which is connected by the axial thrust force uh, force w as shown in a figure okay t is the torque transmitted by the clutch uh, p is the intensity of axial that is the bearing pressure we can say r1 r2 the internal external radius of the frictional surfaces uh, r is the mean radius of frictional phase mu is the coefficient of friction now consider a elementary ring of radius r and thickness dr so that is a so a minor movement okay elementary radial uh, ring of radius therefore we know that the, the contact surface of or you can say frictional surface is equal to 2 pi r into dr normal or axial force that is delta w is equal to pressure into area so p into 2 pi r into dr and the frictional forces on the ring acting tangentially at the radius r is equal to mu that is normal forces uh, fr is equal to mu into delta w that is a mu into p into 2 pi r into dr so the frictional torque is equal to 2 pi 2 mu pi p r square into dr now here are the two considerations we need to consider there are two different cases we can say first one uh, when there is an uniform pressure and second one when there is a an uniform wear now when the pressure is uniformly distributed over the entire area of the friction surface which is uh, which is shown in figure number 1a then the intensity of pressure p is equal to w by pi r1 square minus r2 square as we know that w is the axial thrust okay so the frictional torque on the elementary ring of radius r and the thickness dr which is we have calculated just now that is tr is equal to 2 pi mu p r square into dr so we can integrate this equation with the limitations of r2 to r1 uh, for total frictional torque so what we get the radius capital r that is the mean radius of frictional surface is equal to 2/3 r1 cube minus r2 cube divided by r to r1 q r1 square minus r2 square so this is an equation which we can use to calculate the minimum radius of frictional forces now next one is to consider uniform vs wear condition so when we design the part are subjected to wear due to the sliding friction uh, is the normally wear in a proportion to the work of friction the work of friction is proportional to the product of normal pressure and the sliding velocity so normal work uh, wear is equal to work on friction that is a p into v so k uh, p is equal to pv is equal to k where k is the constant okay so the friction surface is new uh, when we are uh, we deploy the uniform axial wear uh, theory when the frictional surface is new 
there is a uniform pressure distribution over the entire contact surface. This pressure will be wear most rapidly where the sliding velocity is maximum and this will reduce the pressure between the friction surface. This wearing process continues until the product of PV is constant over the entire surface. Therefore, the wear will be uniform as shown in figure number two. Let P the normal intensity of pressure at the radius R from the axis of clutch. Then the intensity of pressure varies from inversely with the distance. So PR is equal to C and P is equal to C upon R. Now, the normal force W, we can find out by integration. So delta W is equal to 2 pi R into P into dr. So P is equal to C by R, RR get cancelled. So you have an equation 2 pi C dr. Now integrating this equation with the limit of R2 to R1. So what we get C is equal to W divided by 2 pi R1 minus R2. Now the frictional torque acting on the ring TR is equal to 2 pi mu PR square into dr. Okay. So simplifying the equation by putting the value of P that is C by R. What do we get? 2 pi mu CR into dr. Again, to find out the total frictional torque acting on the friction surface, we are integrating this equation. So with the limits of R2 to R1, So after the simplifying the equation, what we get T is equal to one half mu into W R1 plus R2, or you can simply say mu W into capital R. Capital R is the mean radius R1 plus R2 divided by two. Now in general, the total friction torque acting on the friction surface is uh, given that T is equal to N mu W into R, where N is the number of pairs of friction surfaces, and R is the mean radius of the friction surface. So R is equal to, in this case, R is equal to two by three, R1 cube minus R2 cube divided by R1 square minus R2 square. This equation of mean radius is used for uniform, v, uh, uniform pressure theory and the mean radius value for uniform wear theory is R1 plus R2 divided by 2. <coughs> for both single disc, uh, disc or plate clutch, normally both sides of the disc are effective. Therefore, the single disc clutch has two pairs of surface in contact. So the value of small n is equal to 2. Since the intensity of pressure is maximum at the inner radius of the friction or a contact surface, so the equation can be, you can say P max into R2 is equal to C. So P max is equal to C by R2. And the intensity of pressure is minimum at outer radius. So P minimum into R1 is equal to C. So P minimum is equal to C divided by R1. And the average pressure on the friction or a contact surface is equal to P average is equal to total force on the friction force uh, surface divided the, by the area of the friction surface, cross-sectional area. So W divided by pi R1 square minus R2 square. Six one in case of new clutch, the intensity of pressure is approximately uniform. But in the old clutch, the uniform wear theory is more approximate. So uh, when clutch is new, you can apply uniform pressure theory. And when the clutch is old, you can apply the uniform wear theory. The uniform pressure theory gives the higher friction torque than the uniform wear theory. Therefore, in case of friction clutch, uniform wear theory should be considered unless and otherwise it is not there is not a statement that 
you can use uniform uh, uniform uh, friction theory you can use uniform pressure theory you can use okay next one is a multi disc clutch so rather than using uh, a single disc to making a compact with the same capacity the multi disc um, multi disc uh, clutches are introduced so it means that it can transmit same thing same power by reducing its dimension and increasing the number of contact surfaces okay so the multiple uh, plate clutch as shown in figure it may be used when the large torque to be transmitted uh, the inside disc usually we are using steel are fastened with the driven shaft to permit the axial motion the outer disc that normally made from bronze are held by bolts and are fastened with the housing which is kit to the driving shaft the multiple disc clutches are extensively used in automotive automobile cars uh, then machine tool applications so in this uh, uh, design of the multiple disc clutches only through only few changes are there otherwise uh, remaining things will be same okay only one thing is changed that the number of disc of driving shaft driving shaft is n1 and number of disc on driven shaft that is n2 so the number of pair of contacting surface is equal to n1 plus n2 minus 1 the total friction torque the equation which we can use for single plate same equations we are using for multi plate clutch so while designing the single plate and multi plate clutch only change is that the number of pairs in single plate clutch the value of n is always 2 because two number of surfaces are engaging gradually so and in case of multi plate clutch n1 plus n2 minus 1 is an equation uh, from which you can calculate the number of pairs which is engaged okay rather equations will be same next one is the design of cone clutch the, uh, the schematic arrangement uh, you can show in the figure so rather than a flat surface it is a conical one okay so there are two cup and cone is there so uh, the the cone is getting inside uh, inside the cup okay and there is a frictional material above the conical surface and that will be engaged and disengaged uh, that will be um, that frictional material come in contact with the both surface and is get engaged okay so it is extensively used in automobiles but nowadays we are not using uh, but in uh, normal scooters we are using uh, the cone clutches it consists of one pair of friction surface only on the cone clutches the driver is keyed uh, driver is keyed with the driving shaft by sunky and has an inside conical surface or face which is exactly fits into the outside conical surface that is a cone and cup the driving member rests on the uh, feather key in the driving driven shaft it may be shifted along with the shaft by fork lever provided uh, provided at b in order to engage the clutch by bringing the two conical surface in contact due to the frictional resistance set up in this contact surface the torque is transmitted from one shaft to another shaft in some cases the spring is uh, placed around the driven shaft in contact with the hub and driven uh, hub of the driven this spring holds the clutch face in contact and maintain the pressure between them the fork lever is used to only disengage of the clutch the contact surface of the clutch may be metal to metal contact but to more often the driving member is lined 
with some material like wood, leather, cork, asbestos. The material of the clutch face depends upon the allowable normal pressure and coefficient of friction is required. Now the design of the cone clutch. The cone clutch design also very simple. Considering the pair of friction surface of the cone clutch, which is shown in figure, a little consideration now show that the area of contact of the pair of the friction surface is postrum of the cone. So the PN is the intensity of pressure with which the cone friction surface are held together. That is normal pressure between the contact surface. R1 is the radius of friction surface. R2 is the inner radius of friction surface. R is the mean radius, which is nothing but R1 plus R2 divided by two. Alpha is the semicone angle, semicone angle, or you can say angle of friction, or you can say the angle of friction surface with the axis of cone. Mu is the coefficient of friction between the contact surface. P is the width of uh, friction surface. So by considering the uniform pressure theory, So while considering the uniform pressure theory, again, similar uh, the uh, normal force, which is acting on the ring, delta omega n, the uh, Wn, uh, that is <coughs> normal pressure into the area of ring, normal pressure we uh, consider as a Pn, and the area 2 pi r dr into cosec alpha. The axial force acting on the ring, that is delta W, the horizontal component of the delta omega n in the direction of the w. So the de delta omega n into sine of alpha is equal to pn 2 pi r dr cosec alpha into sine alpha. So what we get? We get directly simplifying this equation 2 pi into pn r into dr. So so the total axial load transmitted uh, because cosec alpha and sin alpha are cancelling to each other. So that's why indirectly eliminated. Total axial load transmitted to be the clutch. It is nothing but the, we have to take an integration of delta W uh, by limits R2 to R1. Okay. So putting, uh, taking the integration of this equation, what do we get? 2 pi pn r1 square minus r2 square by 2. So here you can canceling the 2 2. What do we get? W is equal to pi pn r1 square minus r2 square. And the <coughs> considering consider uniform pressure theory, the pn that is is equal to W divided by pi R1 square minus R2 square. So the frictional force acting on the ring, which is tangentially at the radius R, FR, is equal to mu into delta omega n. That is nothing but mu into Pn 2 pi R into dr into cosec alpha. So the frictional torque is nothing but the, but the frictional force multiplied by radius. So TR is equal to FR into R, which is equal to 2 pi mu Pn cosec alpha r square into dr. Now, to find out the actual value of the total frictional torque, we have to take an uh, integration uh, with the limit of r2 to r1. So, T is equal to, after integrating, what we get? T is equal to 2 pi mu Pn cosec alpha into r1 cube minus r2 cube divided by 3. Now, when we consider both equations, what we get? We can put the value of Pn in this e equation. <clears throat> so, what we get? T is equal to 2 by 3 into mu omega, mu w into cosec alpha r1 cube minus r2 cube divided by R1 square minus R2 square, okay? 
so considering the wear condition only only few changes are there otherwise the equation get same okay otherwise the equation get same here the torque is directly get mu w cosec alpha r1 plus r2 divided by 2 <clears throat> okay and if you look at the equation of the regular clutches that is r1 plus r2 n mu n mu w r okay and here only changes is that 2 by 3 mu w okay so only few that cosec alpha is considered here remaining the equations will be near about to same okay so finally when uh, you're calculating the values uh, these two equations are used with two different theories okay from above equation uh, it is validated that the steady state operation of the clutch and uh, clutch after the clutching is clutch is engaged if the clutch is engaged when the one member is stationary and other one is rotating then the cone faces will be tend to slide on each other due to the pressure of relative motion thus the additional force act on the clutch which raises the engagement and the axial force required to engage the clutch increases the axial force required to engage the clutch w e is equal to w into mu w n cos of cos alpha so putting uh, the value of omega w that is w n sin alpha so putting all the values what we get omega uh, w n sin alpha minus mu cos alpha so it has been found from experimentally the mu omega n cos alpha is only 25 percent effective so the equation gets changed we engagement that is axial force required for engagement is equal to omega n sin alpha plus 0.25 mu omega n cos alpha okay and under the steady operation of the clutch the decrease in semicone angle increases the torque required for the uh, required by the clutch and reduces the axial force during engaging period the axial force required for engaging the clutch increases under the influence of friction as the angle decreases the value of alpha may not be decreased much uh, because say a smaller semicon angle requires larger axial force for disengagement so the omega d that is a force required for disengagement w wd is equal to omega n sorry w n into bracket mu cos of alpha minus sin of alpha okay uh, only few variation is there only that uh, engaging uh, the value of a second term is both having addition and the second term is uh, having 25 percent effectiveness here the difference have we consider directly okay so basic comparison we go with the comparison single plate and multi-plate clutch we generally ask for viva as well as in examination uh, the comparison between single plate and multi-plate as the name suggests single plate clutch consists of clutch those both sides are coated with the frictional material on single single plate heat generation is very less as the number of contact surfaces is less so uh, there is no um, need of cooling medium so it is called as a dry type of clutches in coefficient of here the coefficient of friction is high the clutch engagement is al almost instantaneous the single plate clutches use where the large radial space is available such as a trucks cars multiple clutches it is name suggests the multiple clutches consist of more than one plates clutch plates are used here the heat generation is more as compared to the single plate clutch so more friction surface so it needs cooling medium so it is preferred as a dry type a weight type of clutches 
the coefficient of friction is uh, low as compared to the single plate clutch the clutch engagement is more is not instantaneous it is gradually multi plate clutch is used when the compact construction is desirable when in it meant it meant that the size will be less for same uh, capacity uh, it is generally used in uh, motorcycles then comparison between plate clutch and cone cone clutch the plate clutch uh, it is single type or multi type which is used in cars with the light ve vehicles it has only one fixed type of uh, plate uh, spline on the clutch shaft the flywheel is mounted on the crankshaft of the engine a pressure plate is connected with the flywheel uh, through the bolts and the clutch spring it is free to slide on the clutch shaft with the movement of the clutch pedal when the clutch pedal is engaged to position the clutch uh, plate remains the grip between the flywheel and the pressure plate the friction lines are provided on the both side of the clutch plate on the one side of the clutch plate is not in a touch with the flywheel and other side of the pressure plate due to the friction on the both sides the clutch plate uh, revolves with the flywheel therefore the clutch transmit uh, engine power to the clutch shaft clutch shaft is connected with the gearbox or transmission system of the automobile thus the tra clutch transmits power from engine to transmission system which remains rotated uh, re which in turn rotate wheel of the engine in cone clutch are generally now used with the low peripheral speed application although they were once common common in automobile previously but nowadays it is not used as much they are usually on used in a very special transmission like racing rallying extreme off road vehicles although they are common in power boats a cone clutch serves the same purpose as the disc or plate clutch it is also transmit the power however instead of meeting two spinning disc the cone clutch use two cone surfaces to transmit the uh, friction or torque the cone clutch transmit the higher torque than the plate and disc clutch with the same size okay so these are few uh, different uh, 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 comparison between uh, clutch and um, cone clutch and multi plate clutch so it could be useful for differentiate while in wifi okay so if have any doubt i hope uh, it could be it is a very uh, easy concept and it you have already studied in automobile so it it is very easy to understand now uh, in next lecture we will go with the numericals we will discuss to solve the numericals for single plate multi plate and cone clutch okay so thank you for joining lecture if you have any doubt you can feel free to contact me thank you